Special Training, The Mixing and Loading of Corpyrifos. Hello and welcome to this special training approved by the Oregon Department of Agriculture for mixers and loaders of Corpyrifos pesticide products. This training for the mixers and loaders of Corpyrifos is a supplement to other trainings. It is not a substitute for worker protection standard training or WPS training, nor for Oregon OSHA's hazard communication training. Watching and understanding this presentation fulfills the annual training requirement for mixers and loaders in the Chlorpyrifos Limitations Law, Oregon Administrative Rule or OAR 603-057-0503. A record of this training must be maintained for three years. Chlorpyrifos is an organophosphate insecticide found in products such as Lorsban, Dursban, Warhawk, Vulcan, Yuma, Stallion, and Hatchet. Under the new Oregon law, beginning March 1, 2021, all pre-application activities involving mixing or loading chlorpyrifos containing products must be conducted by A. A certified and licensed pesticide applicator, a certified and licensed public applicator, or a certified and licensed private applicator, or B. An individual who has successfully completed a special training conducted or approved by ODA on the mixing and loading of chlorpyrifos containing products. This is the special training required by the law. This training must be completed annually. A record of the training must be maintained for three years from the date of the training, and the training record must be available for review and inspection by the department during business hours. Why is a special training required for mixers and loaders of chlorpyrifos? While they can be an important and useful tool for pest control in agricultural production, pesticides such as chlorpyrifos are neurotoxins and may pose serious health risks if applied or handled improperly. Mixers and loaders may potentially be exposed to concentrated chlorpyrifos if handled improperly. This training is designed to help minimize the risks posed when working with chlorpyrifos. Chlorpyrifos is an organophosphate class insecticide which, if absorbed into the body, has the potential to cause both acute and chronic health effects. Effects of acute exposure may include headaches, blurred vision, dizziness, nausea, loss of consciousness, and death. Effects of chronic exposure to chlorpyrifos may include loss of peripheral nerve function, irritability, depression, and numbness in the hands and feet, and can also worsen asthma symptoms. The process of mixing and loading pesticides such as chlorpyrifos often requires opening containers of concentrated liquid and granular forms of pesticide product, and then measuring, mixing, and loading the product into application equipment. Because of a higher possibility of spills and splashes, you are more likely to be exposed to chlorpyrifos during the mixing and loading process. Pesticides can enter the body through multiple routes of exposure. Since pesticide residues can be hard to see, it is often difficult for you to avoid contact with them. Pesticide labels contain important information on how to properly mix, load, and apply pesticides so that you can minimize your exposure. Pesticide labels also contain very important information on what type of personal protective equipment, or PPE, that must be worn, first aid treatment measures to be taken in the event of an exposure to the pesticide, 
and recommendations for removing PPE and washing yourself after pesticide mixing and loading activities. Make sure to carefully read the label to determine and wear the proper PPE, including the correct respirator as required by Oregon state law. And always measure and handle pesticides carefully. The pesticide label also provides information concerning the environmental hazards that may be posed by the pesticide. Chlorpyrifos containing pesticides should be mixed at a designated mixing and loading station that not only has the proper equipment for mixing and loading, but that is located away from open water sources that could potentially contaminate rivers, streams, or other waters and harm the environment. Prevent pesticides from contaminating water sources by never mixing or loading pesticides or cleaning equipment near water sources, such as streams, rivers, or ditches. As we have covered previously, pesticide labels contain important information on what types of personal protective equipment, or PPE, to be worn in order to minimize exposure to pesticides during mixing and loading activities. Some examples of PPE include coveralls over long sleeve shirt and long pants, chemical resistant gloves, chemical resistant apron when mixing or loading or exposed to the concentrate, and chemical resistant footwear plus socks. Always read the label directions and wear the proper PPE required on the label. But please be aware that there is now one important exception to the PPE on chlorpyrifos labels. In Oregon, there are respirator requirements that exceed those on most chlorpyrifos labels. As of December 15, 2020, the respirator requirements in Oregon law exceed most label requirements on Clopyrifos product labels. You must follow the more protective Oregon requirements. Under the law, all mixers and loaders of Clopyrifos, regardless of formulation, are required to wear a minimum of A, a particulate filtering face piece respirator with any N R or P filter, or B, an elastomeric particulate respirator with any N, R, or P filter, or C, a powered air purifying respirator with H, E filters. Before you work with a pesticide that requires respiratory protection, your employer must make sure that you participate in a medical evaluation respirator fit testing, and respirator use and maintenance training. For the medical evaluation, you must be cleared by a licensed healthcare professional before you can wear the respirator. Based on your answers to a confidential medical history questionnaire, a physician or medical professional may require that you schedule a follow-up visit or provide additional information to determine if you are physically able to use a respirator. For the respirator fit test, if you are given medical clearance, your employer must make sure that the respirator that you will use fits properly. The respirator must be fit tested at least annually. For respirator use and maintenance training, once you are medically cleared, you must receive training at least annually on how to properly use, store, and care for your respirator. Having the correct PPE is critical to protecting yourself from chlorpyrifos contamination. Your employer must provide you with the label required PPE for the job that you will be doing. PPE must be provided in clean and operating condition and employers must make sure it is worn correctly. Inspect your PPE before each day of use and repair or dispose of any damaged PPE. When taking off your PPE, be careful not to get pesticides on your skin or inner clothing. 
Wash the outside of your gloves while you're still wearing them. If possible, keep your gloves on while taking off any other PPE. Touch the outsides of PPE as little as possible when removing it. Wash your hands, face, and any other exposed skin using lots of soap and water. Do not wear home or take home PPE that you have used in your work. It is the responsibility of your employer to do the following. At the end of the day, clean PPE before reuse. All clean PPE must be either dried thoroughly before being stored or must be put in a well-ventilated place to dry. PPE must be stored separately from work clothing and apart from pesticide contaminated areas. Do not store PPE in the pesticide storage area. Any contaminated PPE must be kept separate and washed separately from any other clothing or laundry. Any person who cleans or launders PPE at the establishment must be told that the PPE may be contaminated with pesticides, that there are potentially harmful effects of exposure to pesticides, and the correct ways to handle and clean the PPE in order to protect themselves from exposure. Your employer may direct you to complete these PPE cleaning tasks. The pathways through which chlorpyrifos can enter the body include through the mouth, through inhalation, through the eyes, and through the skin. Many reported cases of agricultural pesticide exposure involve skin exposure. This happens when your skin comes in direct contact with treated plants, soil, irrigation water, pesticide containers, and a pesticide application equipment. Liquid formulations of chlorpyrifos pesticides can readily penetrate the skin and get into the body and into the bloodstream where they can cause adverse neurological effects. Chlorpyrifos containing pesticides can also get into your eyes from pesticide drift, splashes, dust, and pesticide covered plant materials. You also may inadvertently get pesticides in your eyes if you rub them with unwashed hands. Another way you can come in contact with chlorpyrifos is by breathing it in through your nose or mouth. You can inhale vapor or dust from the mixing and loading process, from pesticide drift, and through entering treated areas. This is why wearing the proper respirator is critically important. Remember that under the Oregon chlorpyrifos limitations law, Mixing and loading any chlorpyrifos containing product requires either a particulate filtering face piece respirator with any NR or P filter, or an elastomeric particulate respirator with any NR or P filter, or a powered air purifying respirator with HE filters. You can transfer the chlorpyrifos residues from your hands to your mouth if you drink, smoke, eat, chew tobacco, or chew gum without first washing your hands. Pesticide residues that remain on mixing and loading and application equipment and on pesticide containers can contaminate food, drinks, or tobacco products brought into the field or greenhouse. Do not eat or drink from any container used for pesticides, even if it has been washed. If you believe you've come into contact with chlorpyrifos residues through any one of the four routes of exposure, it is critically important to complete a decontamination process as soon as possible. Pesticide residues can be transferred from your hands to your eyes, mouth, and to sensitive skin that can readily absorb the pesticides into your body. 
Washing your hands reduces that movement of residues. To protect your health and minimize your exposure to pesticides and pesticide residues, make the following a regular part of every workday. Wash your hands before touching your eyes and mouth. Wash your hands before eating, drinking, smoking, chewing gum, or chewing tobacco. And remember to wash before using the restroom to keep pesticide residues from sensitive skin. Your employer is required to have decontamination supplies nearby at your work site. These include soap, single-use towels, and enough water for emergency washing, emergency eye flushing, including an eye wash station, and routine washing. Decontamination supplies must be available at the mixing and loading sites. Mixers and loaders also must have access to a change of clothing to use if their work clothing or PPE becomes contaminated. If you or a coworker is exposed to a pesticide, there are some things that can be done immediately to reduce the effects of the exposure before you are taken to a medical facility. Act quickly and know where to find information about the pesticides used at your work site. And always protect yourself before you step in to help others. If pesticides are spilled or sprayed on your body, remove the pesticide contaminated clothing and use decontamination supplies to wash immediately. If more readily accessible, use a nearby body of water to rinse off first, then follow up with the decontamination supplies and use soap. As soon as possible, shower with soap and water, shampoo your hair, and change into clean clothes. If a pesticide gets into one's eye, the eye should be held open and rinsed for 15 minutes with a gentle stream of cool, clean water or rinsed with an eye flush kit. Immediate and severe poisoning can occur if someone accidentally swallows a pesticide. In this case, it is very important to get the affected person to a medical facility as quickly as possible. If you're considering inducing vomiting, read the label or safety data sheet first. Induced vomiting can cause more damage depending on the pesticide that was swallowed. First aid for a person who has inhaled pesticide mists or vapors includes taking the person to fresh air and loosening any clothing that might make breathing more difficult. Mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation should be performed only by a trained person if the victim has stopped breathing. For all these exposures, get the person to medical detention as soon as possible. Chlorpyrifos is an organophosphate nerve toxin. Pesticide products that contain chlorpyrifos have specific first aid requirements. Both granular and liquid formulations have similar first aid instructions. However, since liquid formulations are more prone to splashing than granular formulations, their labels contain information on how to treat someone in the case of dermal exposure to chlorpyrifos. It is important to have the label on hand, not only so you can provide the proper first aid until the victim is transferred to the next level of care, but also so that professional medical personnel know how to properly care for the patient. Infants and developing babies are especially susceptible to harmful chlorpyrifos residues which have been shown to cause developmental and attention disorders as well as mental developmental delays. Because chlorpyrifos residues can be found on work clothes and boots used in the mixing and loading process, it is important that you change out of your work clothes before getting into your car to drive home. Residues found on contaminating clothing and footwear can also contaminate vehicle surfaces, such as seats and other parts of the interior of the vehicle. 
Many pesticide handlers keep a clean set of clothing to change into before driving home while putting their work clothing and boots in a plastic bag and storing them in the trunk. At home, they can be properly laundered. It is very important to wash work clothing separately from the family's clothes or other clothing that is not used while working with pesticides or other chemicals. Boots and shoes used while working with pesticides should be kept outside the home in a designated area on the porch or somewhere exposed to outside air. These types of precautions are essential when protecting you and your family from chlorpyrifos residues. You should never take any pesticides home from your work for use around your home or personal property. Pesticides used at your work are not intended for use in your home and present risks to you and your family. Never take pesticide containers home, even if empty and rinsed. A pesticide container is never completely free of pesticide residues and can never be safely used for any other purpose. It is both dangerous and illegal to pour pesticides from their original containers into any container that does not have the original label, including food or beverage containers. Accidentally drinking pesticides can be fatal, and children can easily mistake a bottle with liquid in it for a drink. Remember, chlorpyrifos is a neurotoxin that can affect you and your family if you don't take the necessary steps to protect yourself during the mixing and loading process. Read the label and make sure you have the required PPE including the correct respirator as required by Oregon state law. Following proper procedures will protect you, your family, your co-workers, and the environment. Remember, under the new federal certification and training law, the use, which includes mixing and loading, use of restricted use pesticides or RUPs by a non-certified applicator must be supervised by a certified applicator. And also a reminder, all products in Oregon that contain chlorpyrifos, except cattle ear tags, are now classified as restricted use pesticides. If you have questions about Oregon's chlorpyrifos limitations law or this special training, please contact the Oregon Department of Agriculture Pesticide Program by emailing to pestex at oda.state.or.us or by calling us at 503-986-4635. And remember, a record of this training must be maintained for three years from the date of the training, and this record must be available for review and inspection by the department during business hours. Thank you.